Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. Uh, on yesterday, I shared something that the Holy Spirit had uh, uh, imparted in my heart. You know, oftentimes you hear people say, you know, you could have been somewhere else, and uh, but you chose to be here. Uh, I beg to differ. You are here because God wants you here at this time. If God wanted you somewhere else, you will have been there. But this is where God wants you to be, to hear what God wants you to hear. And so I thank God for bringing you to this place at this time. Today, we are going to look at uh, the subject, uh, uh, children must be protected at all times. Children must be protected at all times. Uh, let me begin by pointing out that the future of any family rests upon the care, the nurture, and the protection of his children. If you want to know what will happen to a family, look at how they treat their children. Because in order for the family to continue to function, to continue to do well, to a large measure, is going to be dependent upon what happens to his children. For example, uh, if you have a church, if you have a church and there are no children, you can rest assured something interesting is going to happen to that church. If you have a community and there are no children, something strange is going to happen to that community. You know, children are just like, if you want to compare them to uh, a farmer, a farmer. Every good farmer has a nursery bed where they grow the seed and then transplant it into the larger field. The same it is with children. Children are, in fact, that which we will, in fact, have to cause our generation to continue. Without children, very soon the name of our family will disappear. You have some families today that you, you, you hardly know about them because you only read about them because they didn't have sufficient amount of children and they've, even if they had children, the children are gone. But what good is having children if they are not protected. Let's remember that children are a gift to this world through their parents. We said it before that children are a heritage of God and the fruit of the womb is his gift. And so all cares must be employed to ensure that children are protected, that our children are protected. It has been said uh, that children are our most precious and vulnerable member of society. And who said that? Nelson Mandela. He said children are our most precious and most vulnerable at the same time members of society. What is he saying? Whenever we do anything, whenever we are out to say anything, we need to be careful to remember children in our midst. You know, it sometimes intrigues me, especially in the church, when we plan programs and we plan things and events and children are the last to be considered as a part. I want to say to those who are ministers on this call at this time, if you want your church to grow, begin to consider 
the role of children in the ministry. Because the children of today are going to become your young adults and your adults tomorrow. Children are very, very important. These are the words of uh, the late Kofi Annan. Who was Kofi Annan? Kofi Annan was the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations. Uh, but he came from West Africa, uh, particularly Ghana. That's where he was born and grew up. And this is what he said about children. He said, there is no duty more important than ensuring that the that, that rights and uh, children are respected, that their welfare is protected, that their lives are free from fear and want, and that they can grow in peace. He is the secretary, he was the secretary general of the United Nations. You know, the United Nations has some hundred plus nations all over the world. And so he was concerned about the welfare of children. Children must be protected. What do we mean by protect? The word protect means to keep safe from harm or injury. To keep safe from harm or injury. In this particular uh, lecture, teaching, however you want to call it, we will be looking at what Jesus had to say about protecting children. And then we're going to look at things that we must be aware of when we talk about protecting children, such as missing children, abused children, suicide among children, drugs among children, guns among children, children who are left home alone. We want to look at those things. And then by the grace of God, we want to look at protecting our children from what? What is it we are protecting our children from? For what reason are we protecting our children? We are protecting our children from who? We are protecting our children from where? So we look at the what, the who, the where, and what will be some of the best practices for protecting our children. I hope you will note that I said some time ago that this business of children cannot be one household responsibility. When it comes to our children, the welfare, the nurturing, the protection of our children, really, truly, it will have to be a concern about the entire community. Why? Because you can be one of the best parents on the block, protecting your children from alcohol, protecting your children from pornography, protecting your children from everything else. But then right next door, the next neighbor, they're allowing the children to do just about anything. And that's why this business of protecting our children will have to be a community effort. You know, when I hear parents talking about don't you touch my child. Don't you say anything to my child. I, I, I am really concerned about that because, listen, what happens? God forbid God was to call you home today and you are lying somewhere under some dirt somewhere. Who is take care of your children? The same people that you said, don't say a word to my child, may have to be the very ones to take care of your child. And so let's be careful. Don't be so quick to tell people, don't say a word to my child. You know, I was listening to a particular parent 
who had said that uh, the teacher should not say anything to her child. And, and it was concerning because the truth is this. If you really want your children to do well in school, you will need to collaborate with the teachers. When the teachers senses that you are interested in your child and you are working together, then the teaching experience for your child is a lot better. But when you go out here telling teachers, don't touch my child, don't say this to my child and the rest of it, they will do just that. And then your child will come home later on and say, you know, the teacher doesn't care much for me. Well, let the child know, I told your teacher, don't say anything to you and don't be bothered by you. Someone said it takes a village to raise our children. I hope you are aware that this, this subject, this issue, this uh, uh, teaching, this series about reclaiming our children, reclaiming our home for God is such an important subject. Look at the juvenile courts. Look at the juvenile jails. Look at children out of the war zones. Look at what's happening to children around the world. For some reason, somehow, we have just forgotten that children are an important aspect of our world. The war that is taking place in Ukraine, Russia, right now what's happening with Gaza, what's happening in Africa, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, when you look at what's happening in Nigeria with Boko Haram, when you look at what's happening even in these United States of America, what's happening with children. If we do not do something about protecting our children, we stand to have an interesting future. Children who will be misfits, children who will be angry, children who will just not care much. Let me tell you something about what, if we don't take care of our children, what can happen. Those of you who are old enough to know about the Cold War between America and Russia, those of you who are aware of the teachings of communism that seeks to uh, destroy the church and not believe in God. Do you know how communism got started? Communism got started because of a child. His name was Karl Marx. Karl Marx was an altar boy worked in the church. And one day his mother got sick and he went to the priest and he said, Father, will you please help my family? My mama is sick. My mama needs some help. Will you all help my mama? And the priest said to young Karl Marx, we cannot help your mama. We don't have it. And he knew he was an altar boy. He was in the church. He saw when offerings were taken up. And because there was a refusal to assist his mother in her sick age, her sick days, Karl Marx decided that as of this day, I would do whatever it takes to stop this movement called the church. I'm going to stop this thing called Christianity, I'm gonna do it. That's why you have today in communist countries like China and like Russia, they have to hide to do the work of Christ. All because of what happened to a little child in the church. Be careful what we do with children, especially around the things of God. Because if we're not careful, we will send the wrong message. 
Is this how God treats children? Is this the kind of God that we must love? Do we have to only be adults for God to care for us? We want to be careful. And that's why in order to know how to treat children, especially in the church, we need to uh, really be careful to ensure that children are cared for properly and that whatever we do, that children are not the victims of our activities. We need to love children. We need to care for them. Yes, and we must protect our children, especially in the life of the church. And it's for that reason that today we want to begin to look at what was Jesus's teachings about the protection of our children. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus do about the protection of children? Because if we are going to be uh, Christians, followers of Christ, then we too must embody, we too must take up for children just as Jesus took up for children. In the book of Matthew, Matthew, the 19th chapter, verses 13 to 14, here is an incident where, in fact, Jesus had to speak up for children. You remember when we're talking about Lemuel's uh, mama's teachings, one of the things she said to uh, her son, speak up for the voiceless. Stand up for justice for those who are being mistreated. Yes, yeah, speak up for the vulnerable, the weak, the feeble. You cannot call yourself a real Christian and see people suffering and you do nothing about it. All you are concerned about going to church, singing your little amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Hear your little message from the pastor. Pay your little tithe. Get back in your car and go home. And next door to the church, there are children with no one to care for them. During the course of the week, there are children with no one to really care for their well-being. Why? Because of times, unfortunately, if you will really be truthful about it, how many times do we think about the totality of children before we even bring them into this world? When you hear people say, you know, I want to have children so that I can have something to love. Mm. Children are not things to be loved. No. When you talk about bringing children into this world, you're talking about a lifelong responsibility. Don't even let people fool you to say that, well, you know, once you get 18 years old, I'll put you out. No. I remember once upon a time, we were at a dining table and our son wanted to go to the restroom. And he was, you know, old enough and we pointed to him the restroom and we said to our chief, chief shepherd, Bishop Speaks, who was at the table, how glad we were that our son can now go to the restroom by himself. And he says something that I shall never forget. He said, there will never ever come to the place where you are so satisfied with them being out of your presence. Because right now, you can see them, you can touch them, 
But when they're not in your presence, oh, they'll be on your heart. And you have to spend a lot of times, days, on your knees praying for their welfare. And that's so true. Our children are going to be with us. And that's why I said sometimes just as mothers push them into the world, keep on pushing, keep on pushing until you push them into the hands of God. Never stop pushing. Never stop praying for them. Never stop working on their behalf. Push until you push them into the hands of God. Listen to the 19th chapter of Matthew, verses 13 to 14. It says here, then people, those parents, brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. Parents trying to do the right thing, trying to let Jesus touch their little children. Imagine that child growing up and saying, you know what? I was touched by Jesus. Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the Savior of the world, touched me. He prayed for me. One in a lifetime kind of an event. But the scripture said, but, but the disciples rebuked those parents. Ah, uh, the disciples who are supposed to be followers of Jesus. Disciples who are supposed to be promoters of the teachings of Jesus. Disciples who are supposed to be standing with Jesus. What did they do? They rebuked those parents. And when Jesus saw it, Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And so Jesus compared the kingdom of God to the attitude, the disposition of children. I wonder how those disciples felt out there trying to stop those parents from bringing children to Jesus and Jesus saying to him, saying to them, don't bother those children. Don't bother those parents. Let them come to me. They're coming to see me. They're not coming to see you all. They're coming to me. Don't hinder them. How so often times when parents, when adults stand in the way of children getting to Jesus. Sometimes the way we stand in the way of children getting to Jesus is when we do what? When we gossip about other members in the church. When we talk down to other people in the church before our children. When we misbehave in the presence of our children. Notice most church meetings. I'm not sure about other races of people. I'm not sure about other denominations. Uh, but think about the black church. And maybe I can only talk about mine. The AME Zion church. But go to any church meeting and see how many children are involved. Unconsciously, we do not let allow children to be around because we know adults are be, going to be cutting up the food. And so for that reason, children are less to be around. They don't let them to be seen. I believe if we were to allow children to be a part of the meeting, maybe our behaviors would be a lot better. But Jesus here said, listen, 
Don't bother the children. Let them come to me. Because the kingdom of God is like children. You know about children. Some of you have been around children. Children can be fussing, fighting one minute over a toy. And the next minute, those same very children are playing again. Not so adults. As adults, when we get angry, it's for eternity. Don't let your anger send you to hell. Don't let that happen. Be like a little child. No matter what they've done to you, no matter what they've said about you, the power of forgiveness is so important. Forgiveness means to let go of your resentment, to let go of your ill will. Yes, to, to let it go. Because if you do not, anger can destroy you. Anger can really, really bring you down. And so Jesus says, one of the ways that we protect children is not to hinder them to come to Jesus. And you would think that it only happened one time. Oh no, throughout the ministry of Jesus, there was always an issue with Jesus children, and adults. And if our children are to grow and to know the things of God, it's not only going to be in the teaching, but in the life that is lived. Children must see us model the life of Christ. It's not enough just to say it, all the time. They need to see it lived among us. Some of you remember some time ago when a gentleman went into a school and killed some Amish children. Ah, well, the Amish people did a couple of things. First of all, they tore down the schoolhouse so that it no longer be a reminder of what happened. They tore it down. And some other societies will put a plaque on the wall. This is where someone came and killed our children. They tore it down. Not only did they tear it down, but they went to meet with the parents and the family of that young man to let them know we forgive your child for what he's done. And I'm sharing that with you because the children of those days will know what forgiveness is all about. Painful as it was, they took action, positive action. Yes. How do we behave before children will make a difference in their understanding of the word of God? Because it is not enough. It is not enough just to say it and preach it, and teach it, and revivalize it, it's not enough. We do the teaching in Sunday schools and Bible studies. We do the preaching on Sunday mornings. We do the revivals. But when will the children see us loving each other? And I'm not just talking about us as African-Americans and Africans. I'm talking about the entire kingdom people of God. When will children see white folk treating black folk right, black folk living and loving each other, supporting one another? You know, we hear it all the time 
unfortunately, that we act like buckets, like crabs in a bucket. When one trying to go up would pull you down. And that's not just here, it's all over. When will we allow children to see us not only talking about Jesus? And that's why Jesus said it's not enough to say, Lord, Lord, but those who will do the will of my Father. It's in action. Let me share with you another scripture out of Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse 2. Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse 2. Jesus said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. What Jesus is saying, if you are going to cause a little child to doubt God, to become frightened about God, to think about God in a manner that is not representative of who God is. Jesus said, it would be better if you were to tie a rock around your neck and go throw yourself in the sea. That's how much Jesus was concerned about the protection of children. My sisters and my brothers, I say to all of us, Let's remember, if we are going to reclaim our homes and our children and our families for God, we must remember that children must be protected.